We should trust in the Lord with all our heart and in all ways acknowledge God to direct our path as we make a joyful noise to the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Memorial Day service. And as we go through this Memorial Day service, let it be with an attitude of gratitude for all those who have touched our lives in defending our country that we may have the freedoms that we do to choose to pursue happiness in our own ways and the freedom to worship as so dictated by our heart and our own belief system. So in keeping with that, let's open our hymnals to hymn number 25, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Please rise and we will be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. And I ask that you remain standing for the prayer of invocation followed by all praying the Lord's Prayer. Please join in an attitude of prayer. Father, Mother, God, Infinite Spirit, as we assemble here today to worship in truth and love, may we have an open heart and an open mind, being receptive to receive the inward guidance that we need for our own individual soul's journey. May we take that guidance using the wisdom that we also have within us and demonstrate our truth to the world in ways that will reveal to others that they too can walk in the sunlight, demonstrating the unconditional love, remaining true to themselves and to the source of all creation, while embracing new things, choosing new ways of life, and moving forward in harmony that we all may succeed, knowing that when we truly succeed, it will be as one family one people with that love and acceptance of all. Let us look at the teachings that the master teacher Jesus taught the original disciples and all the manifestations and truth that was revealed through those actions. And to walk in those footsteps, may we have that desire to emulate, emulate that energy and that unconditional love through us out to the world that all who are experiencing loneliness, separation, and frustration have the ability to go within themselves and to acknowledge that indwelling Christ within, to find that connection and to move forward as we pray that prayer that Jesus taught the original disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture today comes from Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top part of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all people shall gather to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. May Spirit bless the reading of the scripture. If not now, then when will the consciousness of humanity shift from war to peace? 
we have an in, inward battle that takes place within most of us on a daily basis. Choosing to do this or that, what should we do? But that is our own personal journey. And only we can influence that by our free will and make that choice. We have to come to the realization that no matter what we do, even though we feel someone has thrust their free will upon us, it is because we have allowed that. We make the choice to empower them to that degree in our own lives. And we have to take the responsibility for that. However, throughout history, powerful individuals have perceived their views to be correct, their way to be the only way, and their truth the only truth for all of humanity. As those individuals try to impose their concepts, their will upon others, war becomes the physical manifestation, be it just or unjust. Many men women and men throughout the world under the authority of their country's leaders have made the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives to protect and defend their country, their families, and all the liberties for which their country stands. And for the Americans, it is the concepts that the American flag stands for including the right of every individual to pursue happiness within the dictates and confines of that which resonates with us, not someone who feels they have the right to ward over us and dictate our every daily mood. Originally, Memorial Day was established to honor the American soldiers who died in the Civil War. Now we have included those who died in the Spanish-American War, World Wars I and II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and now those who are fighting in foreign lands, defending the cause even as we speak. If you visit our nation's capital, the various monuments erected for our fallen heroes, reading the long lists of names that are on these various monuments, then you visit the Arlington National Cemetery, you get an idea of the cost of freedom. But when one's finite mind connects with the reality that we have national cemeteries in every state in the United States, and that does not include those soldiers who gave their lives and are buried on foreign soil. So it is difficult to conceive the price of freedom in human life only. We do not have to agree with or believe in the cause of any war, but we should be humble to have the opportunity to honor those individuals for their contribution to our freedom. So let us hold high the lofty ideals and patriotic love for this great country, honoring our flag in all its glory as we remember every individual who touched our lives by serving our country under our flag. There have been wars and rumors of wars that predate written communication. In fact, there seems to be more conflicts in the world today than at any other time in history. Yet we are no closer to world peace than when the first war actually began. Lasting peace will never come to a world that thinks it has a choice only between war and peace. The only choice we ever really make is between truth and illusion. When we choose truth, we discover that peace is always present, regardless of whether we are aware of it or not. Once there was a king who offered a prize to the artisan who lived in his country that could paint the best picture that would depict peace. Many artists tried, and the king looked at all of the paintings, and he narrowed it down to two that he liked, 
So he knew that he had to choose from one of them. One picture was of a calm lake. The lake was a perfect mirror for the peaceful towering mountains that was around it. And overhead was a blue sky with fluffy white clouds. All who saw this painting thought it was the perfect picture of peace. The second picture had mountains, but they were ragged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell and in which lightning played. Down the side of the mountain tumbled a foaming waterfall, which did not look peaceful at all. When the king looked farther, he saw behind the waterfall a tiny little brush that was growing in a crack in the rock. In that brush, a mother bird had made her nest and there she sat on that nest. She was the perfect picture of peace, regardless of what was transpiring in the world around her. And with all that she knew, the illusion that other wildlife would be seeing, she knew that it was the perfect place for her to start the life of her new offspring. Which picture do you think won the prize? The king chose the second picture. When he was questioned as to why, he explained by telling his people that peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. Peace means to be in the midst of all those things and still have the ability to be calm in your own spirit. We should stop trying to fix a world that was born of the idea of conflict look past that vision of the world and see peace where it really is, where it has to begin, and that is within our own being. Then extend that peace wherever we are to whom we meet. The world that was born from conflict will change by itself when we begin to reflect the new choice that we have made to see peace where it really is within us, then we can allow the rest of the peace, the world to be at peace with where they are and it will not be our issue because we know that we have what we need and that is to be true to our own self. Micah 4, 1 states, in the latter day, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all people shall gather to it. Our body is a living temple of God. The mountains are the higher brain centers, with the top of the mountains being this spiritual brain and the apex of the cranium. When we cultivate spiritual thoughts, the apex of the brain is exalted above the hills, the surrounding areas of the brain, and our whole consciousness flows into that area of the brain. Jacob is a Hebrew word meaning catcher, supplanter, leaving behind, bringing to an end, recompensing and rewarding Historically, Jacob and Esau are the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Spiritually, Jacob and Esau represent the physical and the spiritual aspects of our being, are the mental and the animal conscious that, consciousness that exists within each of us. Esau, the hairy man, typifies the animal which comes first into expression because we need to learn to live and to survive in the physical world before we can develop spiritually. But most of us of the human family that can rule in consciousness, but in the process of human evolution, unfoldment, this man of nature called Esau must be supplanted by a higher state of consciousness called Jacob. A strong body best expresses a strong mind. That is the divine plan. The natural man is first in mankind's evolution. 
than that which is spiritual. We should not be weaklings physically or mentally if our minds are to enter the higher states of consciousness. Jacob's ladder represents a step-by-step -step realization of the truth as one's pure thoughts, the angels of God, ascend and descend in our own consciousness. Climbing to the top of Jacob's ladder, we find the I Am, which occupies the highest place in consciousness. The spiritualized thoughts of one's mind becomes the seed which blesses all of the earth, one's body consciousness. From this place, the law, the orderly working out of the principle of being goes forth out of Zion, loves a boat, the subjective consciousness, where high holy thoughts and ideals abide. And the word of the Lord shall go forth from Jerusalem, which in mankind is the abiding consciousness of spiritual peace, and is the result of the individual's continuous realization of his or her own spiritual power, tempered with poise and spiritual confidence. Jerusalem, the city of David, located in the physical body, is the great nerve center located at the back of the heart. From this center, our spirit sends its seeds, our thoughts, to all parts of our body, then out into the world and humanity according to the law, the inherent power and intelligence known as intent in the idea causes it to act or to express the, and the physical manifestation becomes visible. I'm going to share two situations with you and I want you to look at the inherent power and intelligence which is known as the intent in each situation. The first situation is called flying high. 15 minutes into a flight from Kansas City to Toronto, Cal um, Canada, the captain announced, ladies and gentlemen, one of our engines has failed. Yet there is no need to worry about our flight. We will only take about one hour longer. And then he added, we still have three engines left. So we're in good shape. About 30 minutes later, the captain announced, one more engine has failed and our arrival time will be delayed another two hours. But don't worry, we still have two engines. We're still in good shape. An hour later, the captain announced, ladies and gentlemen, one more engine has failed and our arrival time will be, de be delayed another three hours. But don't worry, we still have one good engine. We're in good shape. Well, this young lady was sitting by an elder gentleman and she turned to him and she said, you know, if we lose one more engine, we're going to be up here all day. <laughs> the second situation is called grasshopper. A science teacher gave the class a new assignment. The assignment was to catch a grasshopper, remove its hind legs, and see how the grasshopper coped with the loss. So the class went out into a nearby field and each person caught a grasshopper, their own individual observation because it was to be a completely independent study. Back in the science lab, a young blonde lady removed one hind leg from her grasshopper and she said to the grasshopper, jump. Well, the grasshopper jumped. So she removed the other hind leg and she said to the grasshopper, jump, and it did. Observing no change in the grasshopper's behavior, she removed the front legs. And then she told the grasshopper to jump. Well, we all know the grasshopper didn't jump because it had no legs to jump with. So she gets out her assignment and she writes her observation, which is, when a grasshopper has all its legs removed, it becomes dead. 
when we understand the inherent power and level of intelligence, our intent <coughs> becomes obvious based upon the emotions we are experiencing at that moment in time. When we are at peace within, we allow ourselves to see beyond the limitations that we have placed upon ourselves. We open our consciousness to new and greater ideas, bringing understanding to old conflicts, allowing healing to transform the vibration of our own being. The Golden Rule, which is our eighth principle, states, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. When applied in our daily lives, conflict may still seem to exist, but by experiencing the reality of peace, we overlook the unreality of conflict. When we realize we can't bring peace to war, we can only bring peace to peace. We will begin to beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, changing tools of mass destruction into tools to, to nurture humanity, to feed us in ways that far exceed the previous use. So on this Memorial Day, as we hold all who have served our country in our hearts, let us give ourselves and the world the gift of bringing peace to peace.